Pastor Jamie. Hey, today's the Lord's Day. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're so thankful that you've decided to tune in to our services today. We'll begin momentarily. One of our visions here at Bethlehem Community Church is to reach out as far as we can with the Word of God through digital online streaming. But I would want you to know at the same time that these online services could never replace the effectiveness of being involved in a local church and under the direction of a local pastor. And so at your earliest convenience, I would encourage you to come and give us a visit. We'd love to get to know you and to meet you. But until then, we hope that you enjoy our services today and may God bless you with this message. Good morning, everybody. Come on, let's stand together and praise him. Can we clap our hands today? Everybody clapping. Well, I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life Sing loud. 
One, two, three. Oh, victory. Yeah. Come on, sing loud. Cause he loved me. To him, he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Yeah. Amen. How are we doing? Hey, if you're visiting with us, welcome to church today. There's a visitor's card in front of you, if you would. Just fill that out and just put it in the welcome center, if you would. So glad you joined us this weekend. Hope your weekend is well so far. But man, we get a chance to gather together and praise the King. Amen? Amen, amen. Would you turn to somebody and greet them, if you would? If you're joining us online, welcome. Hey, would you just share our service? Tag somebody. If you would, drop a comment where you're watching from. Let's continue to praise him.
Community Church, glad you guys are here with us this morning for our 11 o'clock service. Uh, do want to remind you, if you're a visitor with us, be sure to look in the uh, pew in front of you. There's a little connection card. Don't mind filling that out. You can drop that off in the offering bag or in the offering box out front, and we would appreciate that. You can also go to our website, bethcc.net, and uh, you can fill out your connection card online as well. All right, by the way, our, our website, bethcc.net, has all all of our information, right? It's got all of our upcoming events, um, everything that's going on. You, you, can, you can check it all out there uh, if you forget dates or times or stuff like that. Do want to remind our men and women, we're continuing our men and women study this week. Men, we meet on Monday nights, right? And uh, women, we meet on, t- or we, y'all, women, y'all meet on Tuesday nights. No confusion here. Uh, y'all meet on Tuesday nights, and so uh, be sure to attend those and um, get those taken care of. The, we have a few events coming up. We got Operation Christmas Child out front. Hey, we're a long ways from 500. All right, we're a long ways from 500, and that's our goal. So uh, we need to grab some boxes on your way out, fill those, bring those back, so that we can try to meet our goal this year of 500. That goes on for the month of October. We're halfway done, and so uh, we we got to get to work on our shoe boxes. A hey, fall festival is coming up at the end of October. That's the 27th. All right, Fall Fest is a, a time we bring in a lot of different families. We draw in a lot of people from the community. We need 100 plus volunteers, if I'm being honest, all right? And uh, so if you want to volunteer, you can fill out one of these volunteer cards. They're inside the front foyer. You can fill it out and drop it off inside the basket that's right beside it. Also, right after this service, we've got a really, really quick, really quick volunteer meeting. Uh, for anyone who has any questions or things like that, you'll meet right here inside the sanctuary. And so as soon as you get done, uh, if you're interested in helping with Fall Fest, hey, if you're a student, 7th grade up, hey, you can be used as well, all right? We, we need your help. And so um, if you want to help in Fall Fest, be sure to come to the meeting right after this service, all right? Also, at Fall Fest, we need a lot of candy, right? So uh, if you have brought your candy or you're still bringing some, you can take it to the kids' building right out back or you can give it to one of our greeters or our pastors and we'll get that taken care of as well. A few other announcements. Hey, uh, students, we have Nacho Average Wednesday. Uh, it's just an excuse for us to come and have a giant taco bar, right? So that's this Wednesday. We're going to have nachos, tacos, burritos, you name it, and make it however you want. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. Uh, lots of food. Invite a friend. Uh, we'll have a message that's involved with that as well. And so uh, be sure to be here this Wednesday. Service starts at 630. November 7th, we have, uh, we have our friend day coming up. That's always a big day for us as a church. Uh, be sure that you begin right now working on some families, inviting your friends to come and join us that morning for November 7th. All right? Hey, church, glad you're with us today. We're going to take up our tithes and offerings. Uh, you can utilize our bags that we have. You can u- utilize our offering boxes out front. Or, of course, you can go online at bestcc.net, and you can give online as well. All right, well, let's pray, and we will take up our tithes and offerings. God, I thank you that we're able to come here, Lord, and worship you and, and praise you. And God, I, I just feel, Lord, uh, your, your spirit moving. So, Lord, I pray that you will continue to move. God, you stir us up, that we leave here differently. 
changed, transformed, Lord, by you and your work. So, Spirit, I, I beg you to move, beg you to continue to move, continue to work on people as you have been. And Lord, I just pray that you take these tithes and offerings, Lord, and you help us to utilize them well, Lord, to further your kingdom. God, help us to glorify you in everything we do, and it's in your name. Amen. Also on Friend Day, November the 7th, I'm going to need everybody in here to sing in the choir with us. We're going to have a choir. If you're interested in that, just let me know or send us a message or there'll be a post on it. Just comment later. But yeah, if everybody sings in the choir, we'll have a pretty big old choir. Amen. Hey, let's praise him today. Spirit was. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Sing that again. As the spirit, as the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. The spirit was, as the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come down. Come rest on. You make my heart pound when you feel the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. It says fire and wind. Fire and wind come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come down, Spirit. Come rest on us. Calm down, Spirit. When you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. says, Holy Spirit, come rest on us. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Come on, church. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all your heart today. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come 
when you feel the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come on, church, you sing. You're all we want. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest. You're all I want. You're all I want. You're all I want. Your heart, your voice. You sing that. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all I want. You're all I want. All we want, Jesus, is to be in your presence, Lord. today church if you're dealing with something come on and give it to the Lord this altar is open if you want to come and just pray for this morning's message for you maybe you're for your family Jesus, you don't owe me anything. 
just want I just want you Nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do Come on, sing that I just want you Nothing else Nothing else, Jesus Nothing else will do Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just call you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. our heart this morning. We want you. Lord, speak to us. Use this message. Let us not just go through the motions or a checkbox, Lord. Pray for conviction. Pray that we just re- we hear the word and we apply it to our life. Lord, we need you. Pray for Pastor and use him this morning. Fill him up with your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. see all of you here. We want to welcome those viewing online as well. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We are uh, almost through uh, with the series. Uh, you may uh, maybe say, man, I, is this thing ever going to end, right? We've been uh, on this long series uh, talking about the fruit of the Spirit. We've been highlighting these characteristics that, uh, if we live by the Spirit, should be displayed in our life. And now, I I want to remind you, let's kind of go back. uh, Paul's talking to the church there at at Galatia, and, and these fruits of the Spirit are a contrast of living by the sinful nature, right? In other words... It's not natural to uh, exemplify these fruits of the Spirit we've been talking about. They only come, they're only produced as we walk in the Spirit. 
And the contrast of that is true that uh, if you live by the sinful nature, if you walk by the flesh, there are some, uh, th- there's some things that's going to come natural uh, with, with all of that. And earlier in, in, in Galatians chapter 5, he tells us that. In fact, he says they're obvious. Talking about the uh, acts of the sinful nature. And he, and he goes out and he lists them, if you remember. Sexual morality. Impurity, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, enviness, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. And then he says, I warn you, as I did before, that if you live like this, you won't inherit the kingdom of God. So he says, that stuff is obvious. That uh, acts of the sinful nature, that's, that's natural. It's obvious. It's, it's the way that you're going to live unless you live by something else. And then that's when he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And then he gives them to us in Galatians 5. And he says what they are, which is the opposite of what he just talked about with the, with the uh, sinful nature. And he says it's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So in other words, if you live by the flesh, if, uh, which is how we're born. We're born in our sinful nature. If, you, if you're not saved, if you're not living for the Lord, uh, all these sinful acts, that's what, that's what you're going to do. But if you've been saved, if you're walking in accordance with the Spirit, this is how you're going to live. Not because of what you've done, not because of your own abilities, but because of that's what happens naturally when you live for God. These things come out. And so we've talked about love. We've talked about joy. We've talked about peace, patience, kindness, goodness. And last week we hit faithfulness and what that looks like in our life. And so t- today we're going to be talking about which I would say perhaps is, would be probably one of the less or the least popular of the nine. And that is gentleness. Gentleness. So, so let me give you one verse that addresses this particular uh, fruit of the Spirit. It's found in Philippians 4, 5. This is what it says. Let your gentleness be evident to all. So listen to me. If if you're a Christian here today, if if you're living for Jesus, if you've been born again, when people look at your life, when people on the outside evaluate your life, it should be obvious. It should be evident to them, your gentle spirit, this gentleness that only flows through living by the Spirit, it should be evident to all. In other words, when people look at you, ladies and gentlemen, if you're a Christian, they shouldn't see pridefulness, they shouldn't see arrogance, conceitedness. What, what should be evident to them is your gentleness. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this time. Lord, it's a, it's a beautiful day. It's a good day. Lord, not because, just because it's sun shining outside and because it's, uh, the temperature's pleasant. Lord, but, but because you made this day. Whether it's raining or, or storming or, or beautiful, n- none of that matters, Lord. It's a good day because uh, you've made it. And Lord, we're uh, here in your presence this morning. And uh, I pray that we take advantage of it. I pray that as we were able to sing songs and praise you, Lord, I I pray that everyone sitting here was able to take advantage of the opportunity to sing praises to you, Lord. Worship is a great need that we have in our soul, and so I, I pray that we've taken advantage of that. Lord, we've been able to to meet and greet with fellow believers. And Lord, this need that we have of fellowship, Lord, within us, I I pray that we've taken advantage of that today. And Lord, now we've come to the part of the service where we listen to your word uh, preached and teached. And and Lord, I pray that, uh, uh, that we take advantage of that as well. Not because a man is speaking, Lord, but because you have the ability to, pr- to speak through a man. And to, uh, to move and to change and transform hearts. Lord, that's what we ask for. That's what we, that's what we seek. Not something that we can do on our, own, on our own efforts, but something that you can do through us. And, and Lord, I pray for that at this moment. 
I pray that you use me in a mighty way. Not so that I can get the glory, but so that you can, Lord. I pray that every individual that that needs to be changed, I pray that they're changed. Lord, if there's anybody that's not saved, I, I pray that salvation finds them today. Lord, those that may be dealing with things and carrying heavy burdens, Lord, I pray that they're lifted. Lord, I know that I can't be of any significance or do anything for your glory without your anointing. And so, Lord, I pray that you you minister through me. May these words not fall on deaf ears today, Lord, but I pray that they transform lives. Help us to be attentive. Help us to receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. What comes to your mind when you hear the word gentleness? What, what first comes to your mind? What do you think about when you hear the word gentleness? Now, a, a common misconception is that gentleness is associated with, with weakness, with, with being less than, with, with being weak. However, true gentleness, as we'll see, is, is just the opposite. Now, if you were to look in the dictionary... If you were to look in the dictionary, this is what you'd find. Gentleness is the quality of being kind, tender, or mild manner. Or mild mannered. So so think about it. Before we even get to the way scripture uh, talks about or defines gentleness, just take the worldly definition. Of gentleness. That's not something we're all chasing after, right? That's not something we're all, oh yeah, I'd like to be all that. Because when we hear those kind of definitions or when we hear those characteristics, we think of somebody that's weak or less than. Because you definitely don't see that in our, in our culture, in our world today. When you look on television, when you look at the political uh, realm, when you look at people that are being successful, it looks like people that are filled with arrogance and pride and constantly lifting themselves above everybody else. That's what we see. And so for those that are gentle... Those that are uh, mild-mannered seem to be the ones at the bottom. So that's not something we naturally say, hey, I'd I'd like that characteristic. This is a trait that we would consider, it's not a trait that we would consider to be uh, successful. This idea of gentleness is something that we would we would avoid rather than try to exhibit in our life. Mainly, as I said, because it's considered a weakness. So, so in order to fully understand what gentleness is, let, let me give you some things that it's not. Okay, Gentleness is not a personality type, ladies and gentlemen. Many times we look at somebody and we evaluate their life and say, well, that's just kind of who they are. They're just a gentle person. <laughs> That, that, that's just a, it's kind of, it's just their personality. Church, we're all called to be gentle. This is not something that's just being addressed to a certain personality type. Whether you have a big personality or a small personality, a, a loud personality or a quiet personality, we're, we're called to exhibit this through the Spirit in our life. So this gentleness is not a personality type it's not some stoic lack of emotion well they just don't get excited about things because you know they're, they're just a gentle spirit that, that that's not what we're talking about here gentleness is not weakness Gentleness is not some timid lack of, of energy. and uh, you, you know, they're, they're just laid back. They're just, they're just shy. They're just a gentle person. No, that's not, that's not what we're talking about. Gentleness is not some uh, form of niceness. You know, that we say, oh, they're just so sweet and gentle. <laughs> that, that's not what we're talking about when we're addressing this characteristic of gentleness. Now the Greek word for gentle or gentleness is a word called praeus. 
And it would have been the same word that Jesus would have used when he was uh, giving a sermon on the mount, the beginning of the Beatitudes, when it says that blessed are the meek, you remember? For they will inherit the earth. Same word. Same word. That prayest word is the same thing. So, so you could say, uh, this: when the Bible talks about meekness, when the Bible talks about gentleness, it, it's, it's talking about the same thing. It uses most of the time the same Greek word there. And here's what that really means. Here's what that uh, Greek word, when you, when you hear meekness, when you hear Jesus talk about it, when, when you hear Paul talk about it, what, what it's talking about is, is this. It's power under control. That's what we're talking about when we talk about gentleness. We're talking about power. See, listen, being gentle, ladies and gentlemen, is not, that doesn't mean that you don't have power. That doesn't mean that you don't have energy. That doesn't mean you don't have a lot of resources. That doesn't mean you don't have um, a, 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 a lot of talents. What it means is that all those talents, all that energy, all that power is controlled properly. You see, th- this characteristic is so very, very important, ladies and gentlemen. Because it's, it, it, if, we, if we would exemplify this one characteristic, think about how much better our world would be. Think about all the people who have power and fame and and success in our world. And they're screwing up our world. You know why? Because they're not using it properly. They have power. They have uh, resources at their fingertips. They have talents. They they, they have power, but, but they're not using it properly. And so they have all that, but instead of being under control, they're out of control. A good example of this is, would be just take a horse, right? Take a powerful horse. Could, could be crazy and chaotic. And, and when it's tamed, and, and, and it's not that it, uh, it doesn't still have that power. Sure it does. But it's, it's under control now. And it can do a lot, a lot more with that control than it can being out of control. Gentleness is a form of temperance or moderation. It's a virtue of of harnessing our anger, harnessing our our talents and, and desires. John Wesley, he said this about gentleness and meekness. He said, there is no disposition which is more essential to Christianity. I believe he's right. There's no... There's no disposition which is more essential to Christianity. All right, so, so let me give you three things concerning this gentleness, how this, is, how this looks in our life, how it should be played out. If, if you are a Christian, if you are uh, uh, living for Jesus... Now, now listen to me. I'm giving you these characteristics not as something you say I don't I hope you're not leaving every week saying oh I've got I got to make sure I'm gentle I, I got to make sure that I'm patient I got to make sure that I go out and and, and do kindness no, no no if you start doing all that ladies and gentlemen uh, you're you're gonna fail here's what I'm trying to get you to understand I, I want you to use these as an evaluation of your life because here's the truth You're not going to have gentleness. You're not going to have kindness. You're not going to have love uh, exemplified in your life fully until you do this. You chase after Jesus. You chase after God. You follow Him. And and, and it's through that these things come. So so this series is not for you to say, Oh, I need to make sure I do this. And No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, hopefully you understand, I need to live for the Lord. I need to fall in love with Jesus. I, I need to walk by the Spirit. And in doing that, this stuff will happen. So, if you're gentle, if you're living a life of gentle, if you're walking by the Spirit, here, here's, here's some things that happens when it comes to this gentleness thing. Number one, we are to respond With gentleness. We are to respond to gentleness. Proverbs 15.1 it says this. A gentle answer.
answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word turns up anger, stirs up anger. Hey, you know some people, it's just the opposite. Huh? Man, you, you talk to them and they liable to blow up the joint. You know what I mean? The more they get to talk, the more they share, the more they're angry. And, and before you know it, the room is a mess. Man, that's not how it should be as Christians, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, we should respond gently. And, and, and see, when you're in a room as a Christian and you get to talk, when you start responding, this is what should happen. The temperature of the room should go down. Not go up. Not everything else get heated. Not, not the chaos get worse. No, no. That's what happens when people of the world talk. That's what happens when people of the world respond. But as Christians, when you respond, it shouldn't stir up anger in people. It should suppress the situation. It should turn away wrath. Think about it. That's, how, that's what Jesus did. That's how he responded. He didn't go around lashing out at people. You say, come on now, pastor. What'd he do in the temple? He come flipping over tables, right? Church has one time. Hey, listen, they, I, I'm not telling you don't have a backbone. Jesus had a backbone. And there's times that, that, that you have to address things a certain way. But man, most of the time, you see Jesus very gentle in his response to people. Very calm and collected in how he deals with people. Say, so give me an example. He's on the cross. Hmm. Father, forgive them. This, this is how I'm going to respond to all this stuff, to all the people that have turned their back on me and, and these people that I have come to save and deliver. And man, they've all turned against me. Here's my response. Forgive them, Father. For they know not what they do. The disciples come to Jesus. Hey, Jesus, we need to get these children out of here. They're disrupting our ministry. They're disrupting our work. He said, whoa, 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 chill out. No, no, calm down. You, you, you let the little children come to me. Amen. Respond with gentleness, ladies and gentlemen. Years ago, I heard a pastor just kind of talking about the way that the church has, has, has went and, and what we've become and how negative and, and, and judgmental uh, we've become. And man, we have, haven't we? And, and, and what that looks like as opposed to the way we should and, 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 and what we should do and how we should love people. And, and man, I just, I've never forgot that. And the importance of, of man, because we, we've become a church. Of, we respond so negatively to people, don't we? We're, we're so quick to, 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 to get mad at somebody and to get on to them. In other words, it's always, you should. Do, hey, we can't wait to get in somebody's face. Let me tell you what you should do. Hey, let me, let, this is what I do. You should do that. You should stop this. You should do this. Uh, you, you should, you should. That, that's what we're known for. Telling everybody what they should do. Huh. Perhaps, perhaps God would have us to, to look the other way. And, and, and this guy called it the, uh, the uh, uh, kind of the Me Too movement. Just being real with people. Just being real with people. We're so scared to let somebody know that, hey, I got to go to the altar too. We're so scared to let somebody know that, hey, I have problems too. I, I've got some things going on too. Gumby, 
You, you, you telling me you felt like cussing somebody out this week? <laughs> hey, listen, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. James, you, you wanted to slap somebody in Jesus' name this week, didn't you? <laughs> hey, me too. <laughs> me too. Keith, I know you. You stood up all, you stayed up all night one day this week, eating a pack <laughs> of white chocolate. Reese's peanut butter cup. Hey, me too. I did. It was one of those nights. Me too. You, you, you telling me sometimes you sit in church and you, and you don't really want to be here? Come, come real close. Me too. Me too. I, I'm, I'm the pastor. Me too. Hey, there's, there's nothing wrong with you because you, you, don't, you don't feel like a, a heavenly highway hymn every day. There's nothing wrong with you that, that because you're not perfect. There, there's nothing wrong with you that, 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 that you have some weird feelings. Sometimes you have to deal with them. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. And ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing wrong with letting other people know that there is something wrong with you. Because none of us are perfect. We've all got things going on. Don't you understand? That's why Jesus came. That was his purpose. You got the prince of heaven stepping out into a jacked up world, man. He stepped out knowing what was ahead of him. And he suffered like you suffer. Man, he, he got ashamed and, and, and embarrassed just like we do. He, he suffered all kinds of things just like you suffer, man. And he did it because he loved you. And he did it so he could go to the Father and say, Father, I know what, the, I know what it's like. I know what they're going through. The pain that they're going through. The suffering is real. I've been in their shoes. And all the places you've fallen, ladies and gentlemen, he did too, but he got up. And all the obstacles that, that you keep facing, that you can't get around, he faced them and he went around them and he overcame them. Why? So, so that he can intervene and intercede for your sin and for mine. And he can sympathize with what's going on in your life. And not only that, he knows what to supply and to give you so that next time you do fall down, you don't have to stay down. And, and he'll give you the strength to go around that obstacle that you may have. Man, don't, don't forget what Jesus done for you and what he's done for all of us. Don't, don't, don't ever get... This mindset of, man, you should, you should, you should. I, I can't wait to tell that guy. I can't wait to tell that woman what's going on and how she needs to live. She needs to stop this. She needs to stop that. Be gentle with people, ladies and gentlemen. Be gentle with people. Hebrews 4, I love, I love this passage. Verse 14 through 17, it says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith that we pro profess. Why? For we do not have a high priest who is arrogant and just sits back and, and, and says that they don't know what we're going through. No, no. He knows what we're going through. We have a high priest. We don't, it says we don't have a high priest who's unable to empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who's been tempted in every way. Just as we are. Yet he didn't sin. And because of that, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence, man. With courage. So that we may receive what? Mercy. And find grace to help us 
in our times of need. Respond to people with gentleness. Secondly, rebuke with gentleness. Rebuke with gentleness. Let me give you a few verses that will change your life if you take. Hey, if you're if you're a leader in any way, if you serve in ministry in any capacity, if if you have any influence, which all of us are called in some way to to lead, to influence people, because we're all called to spread the gospel. We're all called to be witnesses of Christ. So this applies for all of us. Listen to me. Second Timothy two twenty four. Through 26, this is what it says. As and a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. And they that may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Listen very closely. Don't ever, ever go and rebuke and hold somebody accountable and and, and get on somebody unless you're willing to accept their repentance and forgiveness. Because here's what happens most of the time. We We don't go to somebody... Like that. We go to somebody because we want to tell them like it is. We want to get it off our chest. We want to tell them this and tell them that. And, and we do. And sometimes they say, I'm sorry and I forgive. And we're like, wait, wait, wait. I, I didn't what I wanted. No, and, and, and we're still upset at the fact because we weren't ready for that. Hey, until you're ready to let it go, it ain't going to do you no good to go talk to somebody. And express our vent. You, you, you go with an attitude to accept their repentance and forgiveness. Rebuke with gentleness. Why is it that we many times act like we haven't done anything wrong? Church, don't take the bait. Of today's society. What you see on TV. And especially the the political realm these days. Where everything's about digging and bashing people. Man that's not Christian. That's not what God's called us to. Pride, arrogance and nastiness. Man that's not the answer. It's not Christian. It's not who God's called us to be. It will not make you a great leader. You know why gentleness is so important? Because God can do anything with somebody who's meek and gentle. But, and he can do very little with somebody who's prideful and arrogant and conceited. You know why? Because they're doing everything on their own agenda anyway. The reason they're prideful in the first place is because they think their way is better than everybody else's. Including God's. Now, your gentleness, it needs to be real. Very important that you don't just uh, fake gentleness. You see, you can be gentle in tone, but not gentle in truth. You can be gentle on the outside without being gentle on the inside. You can say a lot of the right things without doing many of the right things. And you'll never have this fruit of, of gentleness in your life until you, are, until you are a few things. You understand that you are what you are by the grace of God. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. The only reason you're here today is because of the grace of God. If you've got some talents and some skills to boast about, man, let me t- I'm telling you, the only reason you've got that is because of the grace of God. If you've got any kind of sustainability in your life, it's because of the grace of God. If you've got anything good going on in your life, you've got some resources, you got whatever's going on, I'm telling you, you got it because God's been good to you. 
He's been merciful to you. Three, number three, we are to respond with gentleness. We are to rebuke with gentleness. The third thing is we are to restore, restore with gentleness. Listen, this is the goal, ladies and gentlemen. Our goal of being gentle or living out any uh, any fruits of the Spirit in dealing with people is to restore them. Look at, look at Galatians 6, 1. It says, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit, that's what we're talking about, right? If you live for God, if you're a Christian, if you're living by the Spirit, this is what will happen. Those of you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves. Or you also may be tempted. When somebody falls, ladies and gentlemen, our, our goal shouldn't be excommunication. Our goal should be restoration. Our goal should be restoring them unto the glory of God. And, and, and we are to do that, the Bible says, gently. With a gentle manner. That's how you go about that. I mean, you just don't see that these days in the church. It's, it's the opposite many times. Man, I, I'm trying to close. But remember in the Old Testament when Moses was fighting the battles? And man, there, there came a time when God told him, man, you, you hold up that staff. And as long as you hold it up, you'll win. And man, they saw that. As long as he was holding it up, man, they were winning the battle. But then something happened. Oh, Moses got tired, man. He, he got wore out. He became exhausted, man. And that old hand began to fall, remember? <clears throat> and when it fell, they began to lose the battle. Their leader got tired. And they, and they saw that. And then he, he'd gain, muster up enough energy. Man, he'd hold that thing up again. And they'd start winning again. And then he'd get tired again. And then eventually, man, the people called on. And they said, man, you know what? He's our leader. We better go help him. They all gathered around him. And man, they, had all, they all held his arm up. Because they knew as long as it was held high, they would win the fight. Church, listen. Man, your brothers and sisters, man, they get tired. They get burnt out. We can't do it by ourselves. Nobody can. We need each other. You need them. They need you. Don't ever forget that, man. Hey, and, and instead, many times what we want to do is we want to take the staff from, from their hand and we want to beat them over the backside with it. Hey, step in. Help somebody fight their fight. Step in and help them along the way instead of being so, so quick to tear them down and take them out of the fight. Won't you help them fight? Won't you help them with their battles? That's what we're here for. That's what the body of Christ does, man. Church, listen to me. God's called you to be a Christian. He's called you to do things for the glory of God. But man, don't ever misunderstand. Involved in all that is, is dealing with the body of Christ. And dealing with people. Love God with everything you got, but man, don't ever 
forget that loving your neighbor as yourself is just as important. I remember reading, and I, I'm, I'm closing. I remember reading about a man when I was in elementary school, and perhaps you, you can remember the name when I say it. Uh, his name was George Washington Carver. He's a, he was a great American, and he, uh, he was a tremendous inventor. And he took the ordinary peanut... And he found over 300 ways to use it to better society. As you can imagine, in, in that day and time, because of his color, he, he uh, faced a lot, of, uh, a lot of obstacles and a lot of different things in his life. And he, uh, he was greatly uh, underappreciated uh, at one point in his life and, and and later acknowledged for a lot of the things that he did. But he definitely had many reasons to be bitter and to be angry. But he was a, a man of strong faith. He had a strong faith in God. And he made this quote, and man, I, I just think it's powerful. This, this is what he said in dealing with gentleness and how God had helped him along the way. He said, How far you go in life depends on your being tender with the young, compassionate with the aged, sympathetic with the striving, and tolerant of the weak and strong. Because someday in life, you'll be all of these. Someday in your life, you'll be all of these. Don't forget what God's done for you. And don't forget how God's called us to treat people. And if you love God, if you're walking with God... One of the things that you can look, look deep down in your soul and to evaluate your faith is, are you gentle with people? Let's pray. Lord, we love you and thank you for this time together. And Lord, I, I don't know. I don't know the needs represented here today, but I, I pray for I pray for that individual that's not saved today. I pray today they find it. I pray today that they accept you as their Savior. I pray for that person that Lord needs some gentleness in their life. Or perhaps they're carrying burdens and carrying weights of the world, Lord. Uh, whether it's things that they've caused themselves or, or things that's been out of their control, Lord, I, I pray that, that you send them gentleness. I pray that you send them people that can minister to them and lift them up. I pray for that person, Lord, that has been convicted that they're not a gentle person. I pray that you'll give them the strength they need. You'll give them a dose of your spirit, Lord, to help them in those endeavors in their life. With every head bowed and eyes closed. Whether you're sitting here or you're listening online, you say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus as my Savior. I'm not saved. If I were to die right now, I wouldn't be with the Lord because I'm not, I'm not born again. But today, I want to be saved. Today, I want to give my life to the Lord. 
Whether you're listening online or you're sitting here today, I, I would ask that you pray this prayer with me. Say, I'm ready, Pastor. I'm ready to be saved. You pray this to yourself. You say, Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. And I believe that you died for my sins. I also believe that you rose from the grave to conquer death, hell, and sin. And today, I commit my life to you. And I accept your forgiveness for all of my wrongdoings. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, I pray. No one looking. If you're online, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, or, or our website, whatever platform you're on, you say, I prayed that, Pastor. Would you do me one favor and you just type these four words, I prayed that prayer. That's all you got to do. We'll make sure that we get in contact with you and, and just kind of answer any questions you may have. And we just want to let you know how excited we are and to be there for you and to help you along the way because it's only the beginning of your journey in Christ. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and you say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer and I meant it from the bottom of my heart. Would you just slip your hand up? You just slip it up. You say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer and I meant it from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, I see that hand. Yeah. Yes, I see that hand. You just slip it up so that I can see it. You say, Pastor, I prayed that and I meant it from the bottom of my heart. Yes, okay. All right. If you, if you raised your hand, look at me. Look at me. I'm proud. I'm proud of you. If you raised your hand, get up, get up and come to me right now. Get up, get up, come on, there you go. If you raised your hand, get up and come to me. Okay. the rest of us we're just going to stand can we just all stand we're going to stand we're going to sing and just want to give you an opportunity at this time to, to pray and respond however you decide for whatever reason you got something going on in your life you got something on your heart and you want to respond to the Lord and as we sing you do that Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you've made Jesus Christ your Savior, or maybe you'd just like some prayer, or just some more information about our church, do us a favor and email us at the address at the bottom of your screen, or you can just reach out to us through the comment section of whatever platform you're viewing on. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and we hope to see you next week.